Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the GRP Limited Q2 and H1 FY23 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. The statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing start and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Harsh Gandhi, Joint Managing Director, GRP Limited, for his opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Rutuja. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today on uh, GRP's uh, co uh, conference call, earning conference call. Uh, along with me today, I have uh, the company CFO, Ms. Shilpa Mehta, and uh, SGNA, our uh, investor relations advisor, on the call. Uh, I hope each of you is well and everyone around you is well also. Uh, the board meeting to declare the results for the quarter was held on November 4th and the results presentation has been uploaded to the stock exchanges as well as on the website. I hope each of you has had the opportunity to review the same and we'd be happy to take questions uh, later. Before starting with the update for the last six months, just a quick uh, recap on the company's business and verticals for some of you that may be attending this for the first time. Uh, JRP, as most of you know, operates four business verticals that are mostly focused on helping brand owners fulfill their circularity obligations. Uh, we spread across the rubber and plastic sector and cater to customers in the automotive industry within which uh, tires is the predominant focus. Uh, industrial end applications, infrastructure applications which are mostly to do with uh, uh, mining and other civil industry applications. Uh, furniture and electrical segments through our plastic business and agricultural end applications as well. Uh, more information on each of the verticals is available on the website and through the investor presentations, but if there are any specific questions on each of or any of the businesses, I'd be happy to answer them through the course of the call. <clears throat> With that, let me provide you a quick snapshot of the key highlights that have transpired over the last six months, or rather in H1 of uh, this financial year. Uh, to begin with, and in, in line with our vision to remain a sustainable materials company, we have exited our joint venture in the tire retreading sector and uh, sold our share of the JV to our erstwhile partners. Accordingly, GRP has gained uh, uh, 5.7 crore rupees on sale of that investment. Uh, and this is indicated in previous conversations that this we saw no longer as being strategic to the long-term intent of the organization. So with that intent, we have been able to successfully exit the joint venture and also make a profit for our shareholders. Uh, in line with our endeavor to increase the share of renewable energy as well, I mean, this is an area that we have been constantly saying is a focus. Uh, we have commissioned the 500 kW solar plant in our uh, location in Solapur. Uh, and we continue to, at this stage, also assess opportunities to invest uh, in uh, you know, additional renewable sources to increase the share of wallet of uh, renewables in our overall energy consumption. So we're doing that through a combination of either of investments in wind and solar uh, or alternatively buying from third party sources which are also uh, renewable IPPs. Uh, another milestone during the year under review was incorporation of a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. Uh, GRP Circular Solutions Limited was incorporated in July and the objective of this uh, wholly owned subsidiary would be to venture into the field of plastic recycling. Now this is uh, a huge opportunity as we have been saying from time and again uh, coming up out as a result of the government's uh, focus on ensuring that there is responsible uh, end-of-life consumption of uh, waste packaging. And in some ways, there is a mandate for brand owners to ensure that uh, there is circularity of end-of-life plastic waste going back in packaging. So this gives us a renewed optimism to continue to invest in this uh, business and therefore the wholly owned subsidiary has been set up. 
another development that's taking place uh, which all of us are in some ways uh, aware of and as a result uh, affected by is the conflict in russia and ukraine and i believe the tariff barriers in certain geographies uh, as a result of that conflict have resulted in a shift in tire manufacturing across the world the embargo on russian and chinese tire imports led to a spurt in demand for european and indian tire production for first half of the fiscal uh, first half of the uh, calendar year and as a result uh, the demand as well as consumption for uh, uh, rubbers kind of increased in these geographies however the high energy costs and prices in europe and other parts of the world that we are all witnessing has led to a recessionary impact and as a result a tapering off of demand towards the end of the half year and that's resulted in a lower volume for us when you look at a quarter on quarter basis uh, on the other side the positive is that the international freight trade has started to soften gradually and while it has not really been margin accredited for the first half of the year we do expect to be positive for margins in the coming months uh, as far as your company's operations are concerned power tariff and fuel costs have risen uh, in the period by close to 10 and 15% respectively and you know given the, the energy dependence on our, of our processes that has kind of affected financials to some extent as as you see from the numbers Uh, of course the entire industry has been affected on account of the rbi's raise in interest rates and that uh, you know has also had an impact on consumption in several geographies and depending on how that plays out we will know more of its impact in the coming uh, months uh, as as the situation unfolds uh, despite some of these challenges uh, uh, you know we've been able to maintain a healthy order book uh, grown the non reclaim rubber business and have clocked one of the highest ever half yearly revenues uh, the revenue growth has come on the back of growth in volume for the company as a whole uh, in a lot of businesses increased selling prices and of course a favorable currency because we are export dependent uh, the reclaim rubber business uh, revenue growth was mostly on account of increase in selling prices uh, and a favorable currency while margin expansion was mainly on account of reduced costs the reduced material costs were partly uh, an offset or an account of uh, a slowdown in the pyrolysis sector during the monsoon uh, but that 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 has helped us with margin expansion uh, on the demand side the domestic demand for reclaim rubber continues to remain resilient uh, while there remains to be a lot of volatility in the export markets on account of recent trends that we are seeing in certain parts of the world uh, we do believe that going forward there will be some further pressure on demand in tire manufacturing uh, while while overall numbers of tire production continue to kind of be inching upwards they have just about crossed the 19 level uh, which is the pre covid levels so hopefully the trajectory continues to remain up from here on forward uh, the during the first half of the financial year we were also able to boost our non reclaim rubber revenue Uh, which now contributes to uh, greater than 10% of the overall business revenue from non reclaim rubber business again is from three different businesses but it grew mostly on account of higher volume sales in the engineering plastic business uh, while there is a significant volatility for the other two businesses which is the custom dye firm and the rubber composite and their rubber dependence on a single customer and single market to some volatility in volumes margins in this business saw a dip mostly on account of fall in the polymer prices that virgin polymer prices specifically nylon leading to price adjustments uh, and and because the export market is dependent for cdf and polymer composites there again on account of the volatility in demand the prices had to be adjusted our focus in increasing the share of non reclaim rubber business continues and we are gaining traction as a formidable in the plastic industry and being recognized as a circular materials producer our continued investment in this business including by way of setting up of the wholly owned subsidiary is expected to bring improved returns on capital employed in the time to come we remain confident that the non reclaim rubber businesses going forward will continue to grow consistently 
and keep growing such that the share of those businesses and the overall revenue can kind of inch closer to a 25% target which was put out a couple of years ago we remain confident of building scale in these businesses on the back of the leadership that we have both in the rubber and now in the engineering plastic business but also more importantly on account of the push of regulation by the government through the introduction of policies such as epr and the resultant demand growth that is expected in the plastic packaging sector with this preamble i'd like to to shilpa to take us through the financial highlights uh, for the half year as well as for the quarter ended september 22 good afternoon everyone uh, let me take you all let me take you through the consolidated financial highlights for q2 and half year and it september 22 revenue from operations uh, in uh, q2 uh, in fy23 stood at uh, 1170 million rupees as compared to rupees 1007 million of q2 of fy22 so an increase of 16% from previous year we are happy to announce that we have uh, achieved one of the highest ever half yearly revenue from operations in H1 or uh, FY23, which stood at 2412 million rupees compared to rupees 1838 million in half year ended of FY22, so growth of 31% over previous year. Gross profit uh, of quarter uh, two in FY23 uh, is at 646 rupees million as compared to rupees 499 million in Q2 of previous year, up by 30% and gross profit of half year ended September 22 was rupees 1297 million as compared to rupees 921 million in the half year of previous year up by 41% gross profit increase during the period is major majorly on account of net price increase which is higher than input cost increase EBITDA of uh, Q2 stood at rupees 60 million as compared to rupees 54 million of Q2 of previous year 10% growth over the previous year and EBITDA for half was rupees 121 million as compared to rupees 96 million of previous half year so it was up by 26% EBITDA growth though is uh, lower than gross margin uh, on account of significant increase in energy cost from the grid EBITDA margin percentage wise in Q2 at 5.1% as, as, as compared to 5.4% of Q2 of previous year and uh, for half year it was at 5% compared to 5.2% of previous half year contracted by 20 bp PAT of Q2 was rupees uh, 62 million as compared to rupees 34 million of previous Q2, up by 83% on year-on-year -year basis. And uh, PAT for uh, half year was rupees 72 million as compared to rupees 27 million of previous half year, up by 173%. Growth in PAT during the period was an account of rupees. 5.7 crore one time gain on sale of shares in JV company which was not considered in uh, above gross profit and ebitda but in fact is included now on the debt side uh, we were able to reduce our gross debt which includes more, uh, both long term and short term debt by rupees 155 million from rupees 997 million in fy22 to rupees 842 million in uh, the half year ended on september 22 and our debt equity ratio is also reduced from 0.73 to now 0.58 with this now i open the floor for question and answer thank you very much so we'll now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rohit Boti from Marshmallow Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, and uh, uh, congrats on a wonderful set of numbers. Uh, I'm just curious to know about the cost that you mentioned, the power cost. Uh, I mean, so generally we've seen that when there is increased volumes and increased uh, pricing power, that tends to flow through to EBITDA, and it seems to have... Uh, entirely been wiped out by power cost increase. So how much was the power cost increase and uh, how do you this, uh, how do you see this panning out over the next, over the future of the company? I'm not just talking about the current year, but over the next three to five years. Yeah, thanks, uh, Rohit. <clears throat> so, I mean, if I, if, uh, you know, I'm happy to kind of go a little more detail into the details, but clearly when you look at the energy consumption actually at the company we've been taking a lot of steps over the last several years in reducing the consumption or units per ton of reclaimed manufacturing and this is through a combination of uh, you know several uh, debottlenecking as well as uh, uh, productivity improvements and we've actually been able to reduce if you look at compared to fy21 to year to date is about 12 to 13 percent reduction in energy consumption on a per ton basis has been achieved. However, if you just look at the last one year, I mean, compared to 21, 22 to year to date, there has been a, a close to uh, what you call it about 12 percent increase just in the tariff rate. And as far as fuel is concerned, our dependence is mostly on natural gas and furnace oil. And as far as natural gas is concerned, post the war in Russia and Ukraine, or the conflict in Russia and Ukraine, uh, gas prices have moved up by close to 60 to 65 percent, actually, by itself. Of course, that's not our entire consumption because we use FO in a few plants as well. And there, the price increase on a unit basis has been about uh, 12 to 14 percent as well. So, net net, uh, I think uh, our consumption, and we measure it on a rupee per ton basis, uh, has actually marginally inched up. Uh, and the impact, if you look at on a quarter, on a half yearly basis, has been closer to about four crores or thereabouts. <clears throat> as far as the future is concerned, I mean, I've already announced that we've added another 500 kilowatts of capacity in the month of April. We continue to be on the lookout for uh, opportunities to either buy uh, a third-party power or invest in uh, sources of uh, energy which are available. I mean, whereby we are able to bring down our average costs. Uh, but if you notice the PNL energy is the second largest contributor. Uh, we believe that some of these uh, increase in the fuel costs and power costs are probably on account of subsidies, I mean, uh, sorry, on the, uh, as a result of surcharges that have been uh, imposed by the state electricity boards and grids. Uh, and also the gas cost is a result of the international uh, you know, geopolitical situation. Uh, we do believe that there will be tapering off possibly starting next quarter or maybe a little, uh, you know, one quarter further. But to just hedge ourselves and de-risk ourselves, it's very clear that we need to start looking at alternate sources of uh, power. And those are sources which would be renewable, which hopefully should provide a, a fairly positive uh, uh, ROI. And therefore, we will look to invest in such opportunities. Uh, okay, that's great to hear because if I understand correctly, we are moving to more automated uh, uh, I mean, we are reducing the labor intensity and that ideally should lead to increased power consumption per ton. Uh, so is, is there a broad uh, uh, percentage of revenue that you're looking at as far as energy is concerned over the next three to five years? Um, I think at the moment, if you look at uh, our energy consumption, the panel um, I think the, the energy consumption as a percentage of uh, uh, this thing is in the region of about 13 to 14 percent. Uh, we do believe that uh, it's, it's uh, as you rightly said, as we kind of move to more automated processes, and I think I'd like to add a point to this because I'm sure it's going to be one of the questions. Similarly, on the manpower side also, we've seen since COVID, uh, all the efforts have led to action in number of people required to produce one ton of reclaim. We've been able to, again, bring that down by about 11-12%. So 
but I think all of us are familiar with that the post-COVID impact on minimum wages, etc., has led to almost a 18% increase or 18, 19% increase in the wage costs uh, on a rupee per mandate basis or a rupee per month basis. And that way, most of the advantages on the reduction in manpower is being wiped out uh, as well. But if I was to look at uh, just one moment. Uh, uh, our uh, power and uh, fuel costs together are trending at about 12 watt percent uh, at the moment and the half year. Uh, this is at the company. We do believe uh, with some of the investments that we are making, uh, you know, in, in renewable energy sources, we do believe that this should trend to below 10 percent, or at least that is the current expectation that we have. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, it, that, that's uh, very helpful. And my last question is on growth in general. So, how do you, uh, I mean, uh, so how do you see uh, growth in terms of two, three things? So, number one, I believe the natural rubber prices have come down quite drastically over the last few months because of the recessionary fear. So, is that affecting our pricing? That's number one on the growth. And the second, uh, where are we t uh, in terms of utilization in the first half in bo all the segments that you uh, uh, that you would like to talk about, and and where do you see this going forward in the next uh, uh, next uh, the coming in the current year and the next two three years to come? Uh, so I'll answer the first part of the question as far as pricing is concerned. Uh, you're right; natural rubber prices are trending downward. So are synthetic rubber prices. Uh, of course, there is a, a pressure on us to start looking at reversal in prices. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, correspondingly, even the freight rates are starting to drop. So for a large part of our sales, which is out in the international market, uh, I mentioned in a previous call that some of the freight increases were required for us to absorb because beyond the point it was not viable for the customers in certain geographies to consume reclaim. The good part is that uh, you know some of those subsidies, in some ways, that were built into the prices, uh, are kind of uh, reducing, and therefore, to that extent, I don't think the pricing will have a major impact on our uh, uh, ability to kind of uh, you know retain the current level of pricing. As far as the demand itself is concerned, yes, there will be some pressure as uh, the demand for rubber itself is dropping, and that is happening on account of the recessionary phase that we are all looking at entering. And I think uh, Europe, especially, uh, demand of tires uh, across all categories uh, has started to kind of uh, uh, reduce. I believe uh, Michelin, the largest tire company, has put out strong uh, uh, advisory on the impact of the hyperinflation on the likely demand in tire and also likely impact in uh, you know, their own uh, performance. And I would imagine that most other tire companies in Europe would kind of mirror a similar performance. So I can't put a number to what's the likely drop in demand, but uh, there will certainly be a, a, a drop in demand. Uh, uh, you know, the good thing is the kind of uh, customers that your company works with uh, and the point that we have a higher share of wallet with majority of the customers that we work with, we tend to believe that the impact to us on volumes may not be as significant. However, I would say we are still being very cautious because uh, estimates and forecasts for 2023 are starting to flow in from the global tire companies. Uh, but it will be only December by the time we have a complete sense of what's the likely volume impact in uh, calendar year 23 compared to calendar year 22. As far as calendar year 22 is concerned, most of the tire companies uh, have maintained the forecast that they had provided to us at the beginning of the year. So the war notwithstanding, it has not affected demand uh, or rather the volume uh, thus far. Uh, the domestic demand, there has been some sort of, uh, I would say, semblance of uh, uh, consistency. But having said that, we are also starting to hear of a lot of uh, weakness in uh, domestic uh, uh, OE demand across certain uh, major vehicle manufacturers, which you would know better than I do. And that may have some weakness for the next two or three months. But by and large, they've been holding relatively steady. Uh, as far as the GRG sector is concerned, which is the uh, non tire sector, we have seen, again, uh, the push for mining and other infrastructure investment spending that the government in India is doing has led to a fairly robust on the GRG sector for most part of this year. 
so far we are not seeing any signs of uh, demand slow down in that category so hopefully uh, some shall drop in tire demand in india so should probably get compensated for by the demand uh, consistency of push in the grg segment internationally again a little early to say we are still uh, in the first stage of receiving the forecast for 23 but as i said calendar year 22 we have had a net growth of the international tire company customers that we work with your next part of the question was regarding uh, utilization of capacity i would say when it comes to uh, reclaim rubber uh, uh, maintain the utilization of capacity all the way up to september uh, in fact it has been uh, closer to uh, uh, you know i mean 85 87% plus of utilization has been there uh, we have actually just uh, completed our last leg of debottlenecking and capacity addition in the reclaim plant in in this quarter actually and this is uh, the leftover capacity from tamil nadu which i had committed that we will be deploying across all the other plants over a period of time that should that has been completed in the uh, uh, in this quarter so this quarter uh, we have a little more surplus capacity compared to the previous quarter uh, as far as utilization is concerned it may be a little lower because the volumes are likely to be the same as we've done in q2 of uh, this year at the moment we are not seeing uh, q3 volumes likely to be any lower than what we have done in q2 of this fiscal as far as the non reclaim rubber businesses are concerned uh, we added new capacity in both composite and engineering plastics only in uh, q4 of last fiscal uh, as has been announced so therefore uh, the utilization levels for this uh, half year have quite low uh, but i can only say that as far as uh, nylon is concerned or engineering plastics is concerned uh, month on month we are growing at least at the rate of 15 uh, to 20% in volume uh composites as i mentioned very briefly there has been some volatility on account of uh, the demand in the us itself and that's the only one market one customer that we have uh we are again in the conversations to figure out what is the likely forecast for the calendar year 23 but i can confidently say that uh, nylon or engineering plastic the growth is fairly robust in fact there is backlog of orders and it is more linked to availability of fiber from our reclaimed plants as opposed to demand in the market so that that's that's one area where we are very optimistic and bullish about because demand is strong approvals with uh, key customers is in place and now it's a question of us being able to deliver on the volumes i hope that answers all your questions rohit yeah it does so it's uh, i mean it's a pleasure listening to you uh, answer all the questions and thank you for all the detailed answers so i'll get back into with you thank you. thank you the next question is from the line of anjuna shah from shah investments please go ahead anjuna shah please go ahead with a question your line is unmuted Yes, am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. A couple of questions from my end. So, just wanted to know: Is first, so are we planning any other new acquisition or JV partnership? Uh, I mean, we've just invested, uh, or rather, created a wholly owned subsidiary, and there the plan at the moment is to uh, uh, what do you call it? Add to capacity. uh you know we are going to use existing grp facility in terms of the land but we are building new buildings to kind of build that capacity out uh at the moment there is no acquisition uh, that we are citing or looking at or evaluating uh as far as joint ventures are concerned uh, really there is nothing on the card you know in in short yeah yeah also can you provide some insights as what are the factors which influence pricing of reclaim rubber how has it moved over the year over the year meaning through this year yes sir through this year so i mean uh, generally the price of reclaim rubber is dependent on the price of the polymers but uh, i think increasingly this commodity is being looked at as strategic raw material and not just an in- raw material for reducing costs and as it becomes a strategic raw material it is starting to at least with a few tire companies uh, starting to become uh, you know agnostic to what is happening in the virgin rubber price space so i mean an example of this is the fact that while virgin rubber prices have dropped in this uh, last few months 
or rather if you look at year to date, uh, we've actually been either successfully able to raise price, be able to hold the prices that we had at the end of last year. So again, I mean, it's, it's becoming a little more strategic for uh, companies and as a result, uh, elasticity or volatility may be lower. Uh, uh, but at the moment, it is more or less linked in some ways to the price of virgin rubber. Sure, sir. So also, if you could uh, help me understand. That's it from my end, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Balakrishnan from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Harsh. Uh, uh, so, uh, Harsh just wanted to understand a uh, couple of things. Uh, one was so you mentioned that uh, while freight costs have started to come down, but uh, H1 has not seen any benefit. Uh, do you reckon? So you mentioned H2 uh, will start seeing benefit. Is that correct? Did I hear that correct? Yes, that's more or less correct. So, so in H1, while prices in few lanes dropped, uh, uh, so, so two things happened in H1. I mean, again, if I was to sort of do uh, add to what I mentioned. Uh, in a lot of markets in Europe, I mean, because we you know, lost a fair bit of value on the euro, uh, the ability to sort of get that prices were not there. On the other side, while freight started to inch lower than before, in a lot of cases, availability of cargo at lower, co uh, lower freight costs was really not there. And I think all of that has started to kick in only from September uh, and October of this year. So I think uh, the, the benefit will start accruing in this quarter. So I think last year, uh, I think freight had gone up to almost 14, 15%, which was usually around 8, 9% historically. So uh, would you, I mean, would you want to sort of hazard a guess what kind of benefit could we see from some freight costs? Uh, to uh, if I was to put it uh, very specifically, I think when we started the year, and you know, mm -hmm. if you look at uh, coming in from Q4 of last year. Uh, we were as high as about uh, 16 to 18 percent of uh, revenue was uh, freight costs. Um, I mean, I, I think blended for H2 has been closer to about 15 and a half to 10, but we started the year in April at around 17, 18 uh, percent. Today we are at already closer to 13 odd percent as a percentage to sales. Uh, this is as of October I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, I mean, therefore, as I said, blended for H2. One was closer to 15 and a half to 16 percent, but I mean coming off a high of about 17, 18. So I mean 17, 18 dropping consistently to get to an average of 15 and a half, and today we are trending at about 12 and a half to 13. Does that give you a fair bit of un uh, sure. understanding? Yeah, understood. Yeah, understood. And uh, you also mentioned some bit of tepidness in terms of demand and uh, reclaim uh, in exports. Uh, are you seeing any sort of benefit, uh, that, I mean, any sort of pickup in the domestic market to sort of uh, compensate for that? Or uh... So as I said, I mean, as far as the international demand is concerned, we're up to December, our orders book is pretty much known because uh, with tire companies, uh, there is obviously uh, order cycles are known three months in advance. Uh, generally speaking, Europe does slow down after the 15th of December on account of uh, Christmas and some of the other holidays. Europe, I mean, uh, uh, US and Europe. So, but all of that is already played out in the current order book that we have. And at the moment, we are now talking about next year orders with uh, the tire companies. And hopefully, by <coughs> uh, end November, beginning December, we will have clarity on the likely impact on uh, international volumes for next year. As far as domestic demand is concerned, I mean, uh, as I said, hopefully the GRG sector will make up for any, uh, you know, slowdown as far as the tire sector is concerned in India. Now, just a quick uh, uh, note on this, the tire industry in India did phenomenally well in FY22, specifically H2 of FY22 and beginning or Q1 of HY, uh, uh, FY23 mainly on account of exports. So if you start looking at the export numbers of the Indian tire industry, they've been record numbers when it comes to FY22. And that caused the 
demand rise as far as the entire companies were concerned and their utilization levels were also fairly high uh, but because export demand is kind of reducing a lot of the capacity that the domestic tire companies were uh, using to produce for export markets is kind of uh, under pressure so while the domestic demand per se for tires is not reduced is the domestic production of tires that has reduced but that is more to kind of cater to the export market so i hope that that part is clear uh uh exports out of india was not ever a very very large portion of the domestic tire producers uh, it had become a large part in fy22 it is kind of returning back to normal levels which we've seen in the previous years so from that perspective and of course i'm not an expert on the tire industry here some of you might know better but uh, the feedback that we have is that the exports of tires from india are going down has re resulted in lower production for the tire companies in india understood no that's again very helpful uh one question on uh, uh in terms of our employee cost so i think last quarter i think we uh, i has there been any reclassification because last quarter we had about 17 crores in q1 the filing that we had i think it's been reclassified uh to a lower number and i think other expenses as well other costs have gone up so was there any reclassification that was one second was on this employee cost itself uh so this is a i mean 13 odd crores is a number that to sort of uh, look at uh, on a quarterly run rate basis is that uh, how one should look at it or do you see uh, like inflation and those costs sort of eating into this cost as well because you've been saying that even in the earlier answer you mentioned that you've been trying to reduce our uh, manpower cost as a percentage and i think this quarter the percentage is also pretty low on the lower in if i compare yeah, over the last some month. amount is uh, reclassification and uh, this is based on guidance and advice received from uh, the different auditors uh, mm. but uh, in in uh, principle as you said then we are uh, looking at reducing uh, our mandates per ton which is an, you know measure that we use to kind of uh, uh, measure our own productivity and as i said since uh, fy21 to now we've reduced about 11 12% people required per ton of production uh, but the the wage inflation has been uh, over a three year period as high as 16 to 18% so as a result uh, you know the, the the number is not visibly come down but uh, i can assure you that the numbers in our plants in terms of total employees is much lower in fact even with all these uh, addition to capacity including the uh, non reclaimed rubber businesses our employee count today is actually the same as what it was 2 years ago uh, so that's kind of given giving a perspective on how the the control on manpower deployment is there but it's just the wage inflation uh, is is something that's that's not in our control and this is mostly post covid uh, uh, readjustments in minimum wages done by the government on multiple occasions over the last 2 years okay but i mean directionally i think we are not done yet in terms of reduction of people uh, per ton of production so our focus on continuing to further reduce this uh, you know is ongoing and we are hopeful that there should be possibly another uh, 8 to 12 percent re deployment reduction over the course of the next 15 to 18 months understood and uh, the uh, another question that i had was on this obvious subsidiary uh, can you share a bit more in terms of uh, in i mean is, uh, you mentioned it will be for recycling of plastics so what kind of plastic because plastics is again a huge area so and and uh, what kind of investments are you looking at both in terms of capacity and also in terms of uh, people and and all those things so i can very briefly share that the whole opportunity is arising on account of the epr regulations uh, introduced by the government uh, the epr regulations are uh, targeted towards the packaging industry which means that uh, uh, rigid packaging uh, pretty much polypropylene polyethylene uh, which are the predominant uh, polymers uh, will require depending on the category of uh, packaging require anywhere starting next year april 30% recycled content in 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 original packaging 
moving up to over a two-year period to 50% recycled content going into packaging, uh, uh, rigid packaging, and then subsequently uh, scaling to as high as 70%. As far as flexible packaging is concerned, those numbers are more conservative, going from 3 to 5 to 7 percent. But all of this means that there will be a fairly significant uh, opportunity for players to enter the space, but based on technology solutions that they can develop, because the current consumption of recycled material in some of these, uh, in, in some of these rigid packaging spaces is not more than 5 to 7 percent, uh, and it's more, done mostly for uh, cost purposes. The government's initiative is actually to uh, help uh, technology providers uh, upgrade the type and quality of the plastic such that it can be used up to 30% and then subsequently 50 and 70%. Uh, as a result of this, uh, I, I believe only uh, you know, players that are focused on technologically evolved solutions will be able to offer the material that the, the uh, packaging companies can use. Uh, we've been able to develop uh, and working on it for the last uh, one and a half to two years. We've been able to develop certain partnerships and certain niche packaging uh, end applications where our product can be used based on the uh, norms that have been set by the government. So our investment in the wholly owned subsidiary is mostly to recycle uh, polymers that will go into the rigid packaging uh, uh, end, end segment. And I would just say, leave it at that for the time being. We'll make re relevant announcements as and when the uh, plant is operational and ready to uh, produce. Uh, we are hoping that this investment uh, that's being done currently in building and equipment uh, will be complete by January of 2023. And therefore, before the end of the year, we will have uh, some production on stream. Uh, but majority of that capacity will come on stream for all of FY24. Uh, we are investing in ensuring that we are able to organize supply chain and collection for such plastics. Uh, and uh, hopefully by the time the plant is up and running, we will have adequate sourcing arrangements as well to be able to meet the capacity uh, needs. Sure. So just one more uh, uh, follow-up on this was, uh, by what you're saying, it seems that we already have the product and, and we are sort of, I mean, is it, uh, do we we already have uh, customers in 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 the pipeline that that are yeah, yeah. So, uh, to answer it in a nutshell, we have a pilot facility from where we are serving some customers for homologation and evaluation and our own test and uh, trials. Um, hmm. We have a fair bit of confidence based on that pilot facility, and as a result, we made the investment in the commercial uh, unit. And that commercial unit comes on stream in January. In the meantime, to ensure that the customer's approval processes as well as small commercial quantities they are able to produce, we are already producing this material in our pilot facility located in the existing, uh, location, uh, existing factory. Understood. Understood. And broadly, this segment of business would be margin accretive uh, to us uh, at an overall company level. Uh, uh, or will it be the similar levels that we are on a normalized basis? Uh, both no, it should and be higher on account of a this this business has a much higher capital uh, uh, turns than the reclaim rubber business does, uh, and the margins are uh, you know uh, again in in, in double digit EBITDA uh, level. So I think it should be definitely much better return on capital employed. Uh, than the reclaimed rubber business by chance. All right. And on the non-reclaimed rubber uh, business, uh, you mentioned at the time of, I think somewhere in, in the last financial year, uh, that you would probably utilize the entire capacity, uh, the expanded capacity in this financial year. So given, uh, given what you mentioned in terms of demand as well as other things, in terms of uh, pricing issues in some of the other segments in non reclaimed rubber, do you see that as a challenge, or do you think that we can still utilize the expanded capacity this year? I, I think, uh, as I said, some of that last residual capacity from Tamil Nadu came on stream towards the uh, later part of H1 uh, um, uh, in the current fiscal. Uh, but sure. since then, this little bit of a tepid demand as a situation has kind of come through. 
so i would say we may not be able to use that capacity entirely in the next 6 months but uh, i think it's it's encouraging the fact that the capacity is there and until july august we were running backlog of orders in reclaim so i would say that as soon as that reversal happens the good sign is we have that added capacity that's been deployed and uh, once the order situation does improve we should be able to serve those customers all right i will get back in the queue if i have more questions thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of ashay jain from jain capital please go ahead yeah hi uh, so i have couple of questions so uh, firstly so one of the peer has talked about uh, superiority in micronized uh, rubber powder over reclaimed rubber can you just share your thoughts on the same and uh, do we have any plans to enter that segment as well uh so that's again a fairly uh, a the process to produce micronized crumb rubber is not very complex i think uh, different manufacturers focus on different uh, end products uh, based on you know their own understanding of and the customers perception of or their own customers profile and therefore the preference of the customers that they have uh, the customers that we work with uh, we are not getting you know adequate uh, uh, signals to suggest that that's an area or product that we could look at uh, expanding into uh, i mean you know mancrum is a uh, intermediate product before one produces reclaim so we have inherent capacities uh, available but we believe that there is a better value for the customer by using uh, a reclaim rubber because it's 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 chemically processed and treated as opposed to just being a mechanically treated product or mechanically ground product uh, but again i think uh, you know there will always be at different times opportunities for different uh, applications we for 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 our practical purposes we will take a little bit of a long term view uh, and not want to jump into a product category for you know uh, short term we would because our infrastructure is such that if we have invested in the downstream i don't want to keep that equipment idle to run only the upstream equipment so our current understanding and the order book as well as the relationships with the customers are very clear that reclaimed rubber is the preferred choice of material uh, and therefore we will continue to focus on that understood that was helpful uh secondly uh, so any thoughts on declaring uh, any kind of special dividend uh, to shareholders as we have uh, uh, gained uh, 5.7 crores approx from the jv business which was was sold uh so i think the the point on the dividend is something that consolidated level we have a dividend payout policy which we uh, generally stick to and i i believe uh at this stage we really had no conversations on how the profits will get distributed uh i will certainly take this as a suggestion and you know have a conversation within our board to figure out what it is if at all we could take a look at but i would only say that a large part of these proceeds that have been received as profits from the sale of a particular business will get redeployed into the new business or the wholly owned subsidiary that we are setting up so in some ways uh, it's uh, shareholder money going back into creation of uh, wealth for the shareholders for the future but i do take your suggestion uh, or rather take your comment as a suggestion which i will take to our board for deliberation sure thank you so much that's all from me thank you the next question is from the line of deepak kapoor from benchmark capital please go ahead uh hi uh Quite a few of my questions uh, were answered during the whole discussion. Questioning, uh, just a couple of them. One is on the composite business. You mentioned single customer. Are we in a custom manufacturing uh, business for them, or is there any reason there's just one customer for composite? Uh, it's been mentioned in the past. It's it's more like a contract manufacturing arrangement. Uh, we. Have not invested in the business, but uh, equipment uh, has come through as part of the uh, partnership that we have, and we are producing uh, material based on their specs, uh, you know, under the arrangement. So that's the reference to the fact that there is a single customer and uh, uh, single market. So we we won't be looking for other customers and applying our learnings from this to uh, set up some capacities ourselves to uh, 
there is that we, we are uh, evaluating yeah we are evaluating opportunities for uh, extending this to other markets but we are only at this stage we are only uh, seeding the markets i would say this is going to be a little uh, longer term view because uh, you know if this this product as i mentioned in the past is a replacement to wood and concrete uh, i think therefore it's a very localized uh, decision and uh, the cost of wood in in certain developed markets is very different than the cost of wood in a market like india and as a result uh, our capabilities to see this outside of india is very limited unless it strong resources who are feet on the ground in those markets because this this type of business requires a lot of feet on the ground uh, so we are in the evaluation stage including uh, possible discussions to do this along with our partner uh but at this stage uh, it's it's a single customer single country dependence and uh, contract manufacturing kind of an arrangement so so we are fairly limited in our ability to grow there got it uh second question is uh, you were mentioning that uh, fiber availability is more the constraint for you to fulfill demand on your volume of side uh i think in the previous con call i asked you about uh, your plans you were you had been talking about how you look for alternative sources of recycled nylon and fish nets uh, came up in discussion which you said you know it's uh, it's not virgin uh, as virgin as the uh, recycled tire uh, fiber uh, and your team is working on it uh, i want to know if your plan on working on alternative sources is still on the team is on it or uh, what's the progress on that side Yeah, so in a nutshell, yes, we are working on uh, alternate materials. Uh, you know, to, in in addition to the tire cord that we are using, uh, I'd say if you ask me whether we have been able to successfully develop sources or rather products from alternate sources, answer is yes. We have started to use different other type of uh, waste uh, engineering plastic material or polyamide material. for reprocessing in our facility and that's the reason for this month on month growth of uh, 10 15% in volumes that we are starting to see because uh, our capacity of tire cord uh, recovery uh, gets added only you know in 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 a uh, i mean once an investment has been made and uh, commissioned so our next round of that commissioning is expected sometime by uh, december of this year so we will start seeing fresh uh volumes or additional volumes of nylon from the reclaim rubber fee, uh, stream coming through in the in that business from january but the growth in business is continuing because we are adding these new sources of waste which are not captive in terms of generation so but it's great um uh kind of a book keeping question the debt reduction was uh, this par on course or was it uh, like out of turn debt reduction Shilpa, you want to highlight the reason for the debt debt reduction? Yeah, so debt reduction mainly depends on uh, working capital cycle uh, efficiency. So because of that, like almost fifteen days reduction that has contributed to that debt reduction. Will you be having similar debt reduction going ahead on a quarterly basis? Uh, yeah, we have consistent, uh, consistent uh, working capital uh, cycle improvement uh, over the. previous year so uh, we believe it will continue like this i think it's a lot of uh, prudence or uh, discipline and uh, you know closely working with our customers as well as our own processes for reducing inventories and uh, extending creditors and so on so i think we've achieved where well, you know quite a bit in the last 6 to 8 months uh, by way of almost 15 days if you look at in this calendar year Uh, we have already achieved about 15 to 17 days of reduction in overall working capital uh, we obviously are not 100% satisfied we still have some more room but uh, i'll say this is fairly uh, you know positive as well all right got it that's it for my end thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of samarth from janak merchant securities please go ahead Yeah. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. You are. Please go ahead. Uh, so we were we have developed a high performance uh, reclaim product, uh, which has better strength, uh, for uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, for truck tires. Uh, 
and uh, which was under validation any progress on that front yeah i mean in fact uh, all of this additional capacity that has been added in de bottlenecking done which i spoke about is all happening in that uh, product category so in fact there our volumes have increased and uh, grown and we we uh, continue to uh, invest i mean i've been mentioning also about the new technology that we are close to finalizing and investing in i think we are also there i mean sometime next year we should have some additional capacity coming through on account of alternate technology and process so that will start additionally helping the reclaim rubber business but it will only start you know getting recognized in towards the end of fy24 okay okay so that's all from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rohit porti from marshmallow capital please go ahead uh thank you for the follow up uh, uh, so i just wanted to follow up uh, 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 i wanted to follow up on the answer that you gave to uh, rohit from my thought so you mentioned uh, that uh, you might come out with a commercial uh, plant in january so i'm just curious know about this technology so uh, this technology belongs entirely to us because you mentioned partnership i just want to confirm that technology is uh, entirely ours uh, we are working with a couple of partners to jointly develop the products but again it's it's not joint ownership of ip it's only our dependence on them for certain material to help us with uh, uh, the the recycling process so the technology is 100% uh, grp technology understood uh, so i mean i always admired your commitment to the long term so i'm curious to know what is the barrier to entry Uh, for this technology in particular so is it built on the previous in on the nylon technology that we've already built uh, uh so so if if one had to replicate it what would be the pain points that one would have to go through uh, to develop something similar uh actually i don't have an answer to that question because uh, i don't know of any others that is out there uh, you know and i'm sure everybody is working on this i mean plastic recycling is a fairly large field it's a fairly organized field and there are really large players that are operating in this in india as well as overseas so i don't want to say anything which i you know maybe out of turn but uh, clearly i'm sure everybody is working on something and when the regulation does kick in i'm sure you will have more answers and you know more information on who's got the products uh, which which uh, can be used to the extent of 30% So I, I just leave it at that because very tough for me to give an answer to something that I am not completely aware of. Uh, sure. So then uh, let's. Uh, I mean, uh, let me ask you differently. So what is our right to play or win in this particular field? Uh, I, I understand the demand strength is high, but um, demand strength uh, alone does not necessarily need to uh, high sustain profits over a period of time. Uh, so 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 what is it that gives us uh, the confidence of Access, uh, sustained success in this uh, over the next three to five years. I think it's a brilliant question. So two things. One is, uh, and you're right that demand alone uh, will not give the uh, spurt. I think it is to be the technology, in my view, and also effective supply chain. I think uh, plastic uh, collection is far more complicated than tires or rubber, only on the account of the fact that there's. a variety of polymers you are dealing with uh, and different brand products are all very different specifications and qualities and types and so on unlike tires where uh, the, you know most tires perform within 5 plus minus 5% and therefore the composition and the properties of end of life tires are fairly consistent across brands uh, the same is not true for plastics and therefore i think the ability to use multiple waste streams be able to consistently make a particular product which is technologically superior such that it can meet the epr norms is going to be really very challenging so uh, i i guess time will tell whether our technology and our supply chain strength is at par with uh, you know what the stalwarts in the plastic recycling have already done or do we have a lot more to catch up i would say the answer is going to come through only in april because that's when regulation kicks in and there'll be a scramble for material by then so fix the last question on this again so this is this any way related to the nylon recycling uh, to the nylon business that we have so have we built this technology on that technology and 
and the cumulative time that you have invested in this is more than the one and a half two years that you referred to, or is it a separate technology that you built it from scratch? So I, I would say, I mean, the fact that we've been doing nylon recycling has definitely been an, been an added advantage and definitely been allowed us to compress timelines uh, required. Uh, this technology is a combination of certain, uh, uh, you know, chemicals and additivation and certain processes which nylon does not have as well. So I would say to that extent there is uh, uh, innovation over and above what's been developed for nylon. We can't 100% uh, use what our technology or process for nylon recycling is for this packaging, uh, plastic packaging recycling. But there are elements in the process which may be similar, or equipment in the process which may be similar. Uh, got it. And, and and the equipment that we have, the pilot equipment that we built, and the commercial equipment, is that also sort of a indigenously built thing? No, we we work with uh, specific partners to source this equipment. Perfect. Thank you so much. This is very very helpful. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you all for, for attending this and asking certain really uh, deep questions. I think uh, some of them help us as I keep maintaining in uh, uh, you know challenging what we believe is the right strategy for the organization. So some of your questions definitely help us uh, in the way we kind of think and act on the business. So appreciate all your comments and questions uh, uh, today on the call. Uh, I must kind of close out saying that, you know, last uh, year or two have been fairly positive for us, may not necessarily be translated into margin so far, but I can only say this uh, fairly confidently that each of the businesses that we have built and invested in uh, have kind of reached a point where, uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, there's a lot more optimism that we have. Uh, and I think the fact that the government regulation, apart from the push by the brand owners and the fact that uh, everybody is now looking at circularity, not for economic reasons, but for ecological reasons, gives us a fair sense of uh, satisfaction that, you know, what we've been working for for several years is now kind of coming to life or coming through. And it gives us, therefore, the motivation and confidence to continue to invest because we believe it's just around the corner that the, the reversal in uh, margins as well as the growth in, uh, uh, you know, volumes and therefore the ability to scale this to become a fairly formidable company, we are kind of at the cusp of. So I thank you all for the support that you have uh, provided us over the years uh, by way of the shareholding and the interest in our company. But uh, I don't think we'll be waiting too long before there is a fairly strong reversal in financial fortunes as well. With that, I'd like to close the conference and thank you so much again for participating and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of GRP Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.